Right, so today class we're moving on to chapter 37, which is to the moon and beyond. So this is essentially about the moon. Now, there's actually quite a lot in this, so I'm not going to do the whole chapter um, today. I'll split it up between today's class and next Tuesday's class. Um, yeah, so I suppose this is largely about kind of how the moon influences the earth and what it is that the moon does and what it's responsible for. Okay, and then we're going to kind of expand that to some other moons and things like that. So, uh, the moon is our nearest neighbour. We see the moon, unless it's really, really cloudy, we see the moon like all the time. Um, the moon is the second brightest object in our sky, so that's a question that's asked. The sun is the brightest and then the moon is the second brightest thing that we see. Um, and I suppose that it's very basic. Um, the gravity of the moon, so the moon... I suppose exerts a gravitational pull on the earth and the earth exerts a gravitational pull on the moon and it's that kind of relationship between them that over millions of years um, the moon has actually managed to slow down the rotation of the earth which makes it um, much more habitable and it's also stopped it tilting too much so it's tilted, I think it's about 23 degrees that's kind of what it's tilted at um, and if it wasn't tilted 23 degrees, so if it was completely kind of flat, um, like horizontal, um, it, that wouldn't be good. And if it tilted more, that wouldn't be good. So you can, easily, you can either go from without that tilt, you have no seasons at all, or you have incredibly extreme seasons, which can make it incredibly difficult. Like even though, like even in this day and age, we see elements of that. You know, we see elements of really, really cold weather, really, really hot weather, and we can see the impact. So it would be kind of like living in those extreme weather conditions all the time and um, so the earth has slowed that rotation of the earth and stopped the tilt because of gravity and that has made it a much more habitable planet okay so it's quite a lot of videos here because a lot of this is really really hard to explain when i'm not gonna i mean i suppose if i was standing in front of you and i had a like you know a ball representing the earth and a ball representing the moon that helps but these videos are brilliant, you know, because they're all animated. So please, like, obviously listen to this video. But what I would suggest is, like, at this point now, stop it and watch this one here. Okay, which we'll talk about. Just what I've been talking about there a little bit. Um, so um, any object which orbits the sun is called a planet. Now, that's not completely true because obviously we've just talked about asteroids and comets and stuff orbiting the sun and they're not planets. So it's not any object, but I suppose in this case we're talking about the larger objects like Earth, Mars, Venus that orbit the Sun. It's called a planet. Um, now, an objects that um, orbit the planets are known as moons. Um, so they're generally known as satellites. Um, and then you can have natural satellites and you can have unnatural or artificial satellites which we have we have plenty of like telecommunication satellites that are up in our atmosphere that have been put there by um by us by people um, and then we have our natural satellites which are a moon well we only have the one moon other um planets have like mars has two moons um, so yeah the moon is known as a natural satellite of earth um, how was the moon formed? So, they're probably formed by, again, these are all, like, you know, these are theories, you can't prove them because you can't go back that far, but they are theories that so far have panned out. So, the moon was probably formed when a large object about the size of the planet Mars collided with Earth. The impact ejected material from Earth um, into orbit. So, it kind of, if you imagine it, so that the, the kind of crash happened, certain objects sort of flew off and because the earth has gravity it held on to them in an orbit so they had to, they started spinning around and then some of them started to fuse together so the formation says it here sorry the impact ejected material from earth into orbit and this material fused together so again over time fused together to form the moon and the formation of the moon took place approximately the same time as the solar system 4.6 billion years ago okay so again at this point stop the video and watch this video okay um so the far side of the moon um when we look up at the moon we only ever see one side of it now we can see a little bit over half we can see like 
almost 60% of the moon as it goes through its entire spin. So essentially the main thing is it takes them, I think it's 27.3 days to revolve around the earth. And the revolution of the moon is the moon's orbit around the earth. So it takes the moon 27.3 Okay, sorry about that. Um, anyway, so it takes the moon about just under 28 days to turn on its own axis and to go around the Earth. So because of that synchronisation of movement, we only ever see one side of the moon. We don't see the back of the moon. Now, they've recently sent um, satellites up to take pictures of the far side of the moon so that we can, well not we, but so, you know, scientists can map it and have an idea of what the other side of the moon looks like. Um, so because of that synchronisation, because the moon turns on its own axis every 27.3 days and it rotates around the earth every 27.3 days, um, we only ever see about 59% of the moon. So you're only looking at half of the moon all of the time and it's the same half. Okay, and again, I understand that it's a kind of tricky concept, so stop the video and watch this, please. And um, this is a nice little demonstration that I thought would be kind of easy to do at home, and like I've actually only just done it here, um, with my kids. Hence the, they're all hyper now from doing this, so they're breaking in. Um, but it's kind of a nice one. So you take a small ball and place a black dot. Um, some kind of a mark on the surface. So if you get like a tennis ball or a ping pong ball or something and put a little mark on it. Um, and then get a larger ball to represent the earth. Um, and essentially you want to move the small ball, tennis ball, ping pong ball or whatever, around the larger ball. But you have to make sure that the black dot on the small ball is always facing the large ball. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is simulate what happens between the moon and the earth. So if we're always looking at one side of the earth, then that dot should be always facing towards the large ball. Okay, and I suppose as you're turning it, what did you notice that was happening? Did you have to change your grip on the small ball in any way? And that might give you an idea. Like it kind of it did work really, really well. Like um, it, so it just gives you an idea of how that rotation works. Okay, um, and the last thing that I just wanna talk about today is just a couple of key facts. So the distance from the Earth to the Moon is 384,400 kilometres. Okay, so that's 384,400,000 metres. So think of the metre stick that's you know, stuck on the board in my room. 384 million of those is the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Um, the Moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so that's why when you see you know, those photos of people walking on the moon, they have to wear the suits and they have to have the um, the helmets on as there is no atmosphere to breathe. Um, it does have gravity. It does have gravity, but it's it's quite small. So it, we discuss gravity on Earth as being 9.8. So gravity on the moon is about 1.67. So it's about a sixth of what we have here. Um, and the moon cannot produce its own light. So... Any object, not just the moon, any object that cannot produce its own light is called a non-luminous object. And the reason you can see it is because light bounces off it from some luminous object. So um, if you even take the room you're sitting in at the moment, um, like the tables, the chairs, the floor, they do not produce their own light. They are non-luminous. You can only see them because light from another source is bouncing off them. So in daylight, it would be light from the sun is bouncing off them. At nighttime, it would be um, you turn on the light in the room and that's how you can see them. Okay, so there's quite a bit there because you have to watch those three videos. So like I said, you know, take the time listen to kind of what I'm talking about but do go and watch the videos because it just it's nice to kind of get a visualization of what exactly is going on Um I want you if you have any time or means to try that little um demonstration there uh, I would have done that in class if we were in class um, and there will be a few little questions to follow okay and any of this work is due for next Tuesday all right, so have a good day.